Good afternoon, everybody. This is Brian Ankney with Auto Success Magazine. Yeah, I appreciate y'all taking the time to join us today uh, for this webinar. We've got some great content for you today. Um, today, my guests are John Ayer and Matt Boyce. They're with Podium. Um, you know, before we get started, a couple of things I'd like to uh, share with you. First of all, um, we're going to hold all the questions to the end of the webinar. So if you have a question, I, I, please type it in as we go. Um, that way, you know, I can, I can, you know, I'll be taking notes, so I can, I can give a little context to our presenters, just in case they're not crystal clear on what you're asking. Um, to ask questions, it's going to vary a little bit depending on the type of device that you have. If you're using a desktop, a laptop, or, or a tablet, um, you're going to have a pane down the right side of your screen. That's the GoToWebinar window, and near the bottom of it, you'll see questions. Uh, there's a little triangle right to the left of questions. Click on that. It'll give you a spot to type in the question. Hit enter. You've asked the question. Now, if you are on a uh, mobile device, there's a few different ways it'll work. Uh, you know, in a nutshell, you've either got a header, a footer, or a picture frame around your screen, and somewhere in, in that is a uh, question mark. Touch the question mark. It'll open up a spot for you to type in your question. Now, once you've submitted a question, it varies a little bit from device to device. Some can swipe, some, you know, you can't swipe. The ones that if it doesn't swipe for you, just look for, you know, in, in the header, footer, or picture frame, an icon that kind of looks like a uh, flat screen desktop monitor. Go ahead and touch that, and that will bring you back to the webinar. Now, if for some reason, you know, during that process, you should get kicked out of the webinar, or you get interrupted, or you have to, you know, make a phone call, or whatever might happen that you get knocked out of the webinar, uh, the good news is the link that you use to join us today will bring you right back in. And the telephone number with the uh, code that you typed in, those will bring you right back in if your audio is coming through a telephone right now. Now, a couple of things I want to share with you before I pass control over to our presenters. Um, one, uh, go check out autosuccessonline.com. Our new website uh, has been live just under two weeks. And uh, you know, go check it out. We've got a lot of, a lot of good content on there. Um, and I know I say this every time, but if you haven't joined Auto Success Webinars yet, it's a group on Facebook, please do. Um, there's a, several benefits to joining the group. One, uh, you're able to interact with our speakers and our Auto Success staff. Um, it's a great place. You can recommend to us people you'd like to see on the webinars, topics you'd like to see covered. Uh, you can ask questions. And the most important benefit is you guys can interact with each other because you know, none of the topics that we cover on these webinars is so simple that you can just flip a switch and now you've made the change. You know, some of them might be a set of steps that take a week. Some might take as long as a year. And as you, as you move forward and try to improve your business with the content and the ideas that you learn on these webinars, you know, some of you are going to have successes, some of you are going to have failures, and I invite you to share those with each other. Um, that way we can all move the ball forward a little bit quicker. You know, if you've got a great idea, share it. Maybe it'll work for somebody else, and if, if something, you know, was a pitfall that really slowed you down, maybe you can help somebody else to avoid that. Um, with that being said, I would like to hand control over to John and Matt. Uh, how are you guys doing, my friends? Doing very well. Thank you very much, Brian. We're very happy to be here um, today. So just before we get started, just to go over the agenda, um, today's webinar we're going to discuss differences between local and organic search um, and how you can optimize your online presence to show up when potential customers are searching for businesses like yours. We'll also discuss things like micro moments and near me searches and how they are impacting your business and give you tips and tricks on how to improve your local search ranking. And finally, we're going to close with a discussion about online reviews. Um, that's what we know best here at Podium and why they're important to your business and how you can go about building a presence on the sites that matter most to you. So how do you put your business on the map? And the map we're talking about today is Google's map. Um, how, how do you rank high on, the, on Google's map pack? Uh, figuring out Google's local search algorithm can be a daunting task. Uh, but we're going to show you a couple of really small things that have proven to positively impact where your business ranks. Um, but before we get to that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between organic and local search. Uh, broken down into the simplest terms, organic search results are based on the relevance of content to the user's search terms. They aren't tied to a specific geographic location or brick and mortar location. For example, if you wanted to know what the safest car for families was, um, and uh, you would type that into the Google search bar and it would deliver back consumer reports or product pages, but it wouldn't necessarily serve up results for dealerships. Uh, local search results, on the other hand, take into account what you are searching for 
and where you are searching from. Uh, once you make the query, Google will look into its database of business listings and return the most relevant businesses that are also the closest to where the search was performed. Uh, for example, uh, if you searched for Honda Odyssey near me, um, the map pack will pop up a number of different dealerships that you can choose from that, that sell that particular type of vehicle. Now it's important uh, for you to optimize for both, uh, but in today's presentation we're going to focus on what your business needs to do to optimize for, for local search. So today's consumer, uh, they value convenience more than business relationships. Um, that's why you need to optimize your business for local search and make it as easy as possible for customers to find you. Uh, recent changes to Google's search algorithm have given more weight to near me searches. And in fact, an informal study conducted by Search Engine Land, non-branded keyword searches for generic terms like accountant or bank, or in your case, uh, auto dealership, uh, auto-completed to near me nearly 90% of the time on desktops and 78% of the time on mobile. Uh, Google knows that when you're conducting searches like these that um, those are the types of searches you're, you're, you're on the go, you're looking for something and you want to look for a business that's as close to you as possible. And mobile devices, they're significantly accelerating the purchase process. Individuals can quickly go from the awareness or investigation phase to the decision phase in a matter of minutes because access to information is more re readily available than it was before, and buyers know what they want, so the searches are more targeted. This is because of something Google calls micro moments. Now, micro moment are these times in your life where you have these want to go, want to know, or want to buy moments, and they happen multiple times each day. Um, so, to apply this uh, to the auto industry, I was recently in the market for a car. I, I knew what type of car I wanted. I wanted to get a Subaru Outback. Um, but I didn't necessarily know where I was going to buy it. I'd never bought uh, a Subaru before. So I searched for that type of vehicle near me. And I checked out the reviews for the different dealerships. I checked out also the inventory to see if they had the car that I wanted um, at the price point that I could afford. And also then just looked into like if they had the right color. Um, and, and that's how most people conduct research when buying a car. They're going to do almost all of the legwork before they step into your lot. So you need to make sure that you're showing up when customers are, when your customers are having these need to know or want to buy moments. Uh, to, to further uh, uh, develop that point, um, mobile device usage, usage is on the rise. Um, you know, almost everyone you know has a smartphone or a tablet. And as a result, mobile searches now exceed desktop search, the searches, and that disparity is only going to continue to grow. Having a, a powerful computer in your back pocket makes it very easy for you to open up a browser and ask, <coughs> ask a question or search when you have these need to know or want to buy moments. Um, and then you'll have the answer almost immediately. Because of this, browsing sessions are more frequent, but they're also shorter. So if your listing isn't catching uh, the searcher's eye or if you're not in that top three on Google's map pack or on the first page of the search uh, engine results page, um, oftentimes customers aren't going to take the time to look um, beyond that. Um, you know, I think it's close to 90% to of all the clicks go to those top three listings. So if you're not showing up there or on the first page uh, of, of Google, then, then you're, you're, you're missing out on a lot of uh, business opportunities for customers that are doing these online searches. So what can you do to be there when your customers uh, need you most? Hopefully in the last few slides we did a good job of emphasizing how quickly consumers make decisions now. And if your business isn't immediately visible when an online search is conducted, like I said, the odds of, of customers clicking on your page are very low. Um, that's why it's important uh, to take your online presence seriously and take the necessary steps to optimize your presence for local search. And we're going to go through uh, a couple of uh, things. Um, what we like to do in our webinars is provide you with actionable tips that you can implement today um, that will help you improve your business. And these are just ways that we found that our customers have, have things that our customers have done that have helped them to, to rank higher in local search. The first thing is probably the most obvious. Um, claim your 
Google My Business listing, and in fact, claim all of your listings, uh, business listings. And that is the easiest thing you can do to improve um, your local SEO ranking um, is by claiming and optimizing these these business listings. For Google, I'll just walk you through the process here. The process is easy enough if you haven't done it. The first thing you need to do is navigate to Google My Business, so I think it's business.google.com, and search for your business using your name and address. Uh, once you've identified your business, you will need to confirm that all of the information is correct. Is your address correct? Is your phone number correct? Is the business spelled, is the name of the business spelled the way you want it? Then what you'll do is you'll submit that to Google for verification. And this can be done over the phone or through the mail. And if you're managing mul multiple locations, uh, Google makes it possible for you to do a bulk verification. Now if you do it through the mail, which is the most common way to do it, in a few days you'll receive a postcard with a PIN number on it. And what you'll need to do is go back to your page, enter that PIN number, and once you've entered that, when you're logged in, you'll have the ability to manage the content and interact with your customers via that listing. So next, you'll want to have uh, a consistent contact information, um, or which is your name, address, and phone number, uh, commonly referred to as NAP or NAP. I'm not sure exactly how, but NAP is what I'll call it. <coughs> According to Mazda's local search engine factors, on-page signals like NAP play the biggest role in where your business ranks. Because of this, you should make a concerted effort to ensure that all this information is, information is consistent across all of your listings, your business directories, and on your website. Now, when I'm talking about consistency, what I mean is it should be in the same format. If your address has a south in it, it should always either be abbreviated or always be spelled out. You shouldn't mix and match this information because if you do it, it could confuse the search engines and you could, uh, your local search ranking could be dinged. Additionally, um, this is probably even more important, if your contact information has changed over the years and hasn't been updated on all of your business listings, you run the risk of frustrating a customer if they try to call you or try to go to your business you know, based on the address on the listing. And if it's wrong, um, you're going to make that customer upset, so make sure that you're, this isn't just a one-time thing, uh, you, uh, what, your number might change over the years, you might change locations, and if you're not taking the time to update um, this uh, inf contact information, um, you could uh, make your customers mad. Um, okay, so next up, you'll want to upload high-quality photos. Um, this is, uh, photos are important because they help to tell a visual story about your business. They let customers or potential customers see what it's like to do business with you. It's also a, way, a good way for you to reinforce branding and show a little personality. Uh, you know, when customers are looking for a car to buy, um, you know, seeing seeing how nice your showroom is or how you know how what your inventory is, these are good things uh, to include when you're uploading high quality photos. And we recommend you know not just going out with your cell phone. You can't do that. Cell phones have high quality photos, but or high quality cameras now, but we recommend, you know, maybe even hiring a professional photographer to come out and take photos of your business and uploading those. So you put the best foot forward with your customers. Now there are a number of different types of photos that you can upload. We'll just go over some of those. Um, there's Google has something called a preferred photo. Um, so Google determines which is like the prominent photo that uh, is displayed with your listing, but allows you to select the photo that you think is the best, um, and that will factor into which photo is picked for your business. You should also upload a profile pic, your logo, your logo, um, a cover photo, and any additional photos you think would be relevant. Uh, the other thing that's key to note is that you want to make sure that you know what the optimal size is for these uh, and dimensions for these photos so that they display correctly on each of these different business listings. Now you might not think that photos play m much of a difference, um, but profiles with pictures have 35% more click-throughs than profiles without photos, and 42% more requests for driving directions from Google Maps. So just think about it, like when you're out on a Friday night, you're looking for a place to go out to eat, and you're looking, uh, you Google uh, like Mexican restaurants near me. Are you drawn in by the text on the menu? or are you drawn in by what the photos look like? The same thing will be true for your dealerships. If you, if you have good looking photos, 
that's gonna, what's going to draw people in. Um, so just make sure that you are taking the time to do that. So the final tip we have is to collect online reviews. Um, collecting online reviews uh, can give your local SEO a boost because they're one of the major factors that make up Google's local search algorithm. Um, and so that's what the remainder of our presentation is going to cover. Why reviews are important, how they impact consumer confidence and purchase decisions, and how they can help uh, improve your online presence. So online reviews have a ton of benefit, but uh, for this presentation we're going to focus mostly on how they impact your local search. Um, and a recent survey by Moz found that uh, reviews are having more and more of an impact. Um, these, this survey was conducted among a number of people that manage um, SEO and local SEO, and they found that over the years they've noticed that, that reviews um, are having more and more impact on where a business ranks. So how does Google determine local search ranking? Um, so uh, Google recently offered up some tips to local businesses on how to improve uh, their local SEO and ensure that your business is showing up on the Google's map pack. So they, they, they highlighted these three things um, that are here on this slide, relevance, distance, and prominence. So relevance. A search engine's main goal is to serve up the business or web page that most closely meets the searcher's request. So it should come as no surprise to you that uh, the relevance of the search terms is the leading factor that determines local search ranking. Because of this, it's imperative to include a detailed business description and as much information as possible on all of your business listings and on your website. So next is distance. Um, uh, if, if a person, say I'm in, I'm in Lehigh, Utah, and if I search for uh, auto dealerships near me, it's not going to serve up dealerships in California. So where you are in relationship to the business also plays a, a huge factor in where, where the rankings are. And that can change from, you know, as, as the customer moves, those rankings are going to move or change as well. Um, so lastly is prominence, and this one's a little bit more complicated than the, than, than the other two factors. When determining prominence, Google takes into account how well known a business is in the offline world, meaning famous landmarks or popular store brands will rank higher in local search. In addition to offline prominence, Google factors in what is known about a business online, including links and articles and business directories. Having a strong online review presence can also improve a business's prominence. So Google is looking for things like high overall star rating, a large number of reviews, and reviews that are coming in on a regular basis, which is highlighted here on this slide. So reviews, what Google considers, are recency, frequency, quality, and quantity. So recency and frequency, how often are your reviews coming in, and when was the last review left? Today's consumer, it's, they're very savvy. They know that if a review was left a month ago or two months ago, it's not going to have as much uh, relevance or it's not going to be, you, you can't judge the, the experience based on a review that's old and customers know that. And then as far as quality reviews, that, that both is how what your star rating is and then the quality of your online review content. Um, so if you want to improve your online review content, what we suggest you do is ask for a specific, ask for feedback on a specific area of your business that you want to improve or, or you want to know more about. And if you do this by prompting uh, the, the customer, they'll, they'll have more of an idea what to write when they go to leave a review. So, because a lot of times you ask a customer to leave a review, they're more than happy to leave a review. But when they get there, they'll click the stars, what they think they should give you, and then they'll be like, well, what should I write? Uh, well, I had a good experience. And a lot of times they don't put much thought into it because, uh, you know, they don't really know what to say and they just want, want it to be over. But if you prompt them by saying, you know, could you give us feedback on the friendliness of our staff or, or, or something like that, um, it'll give uh, your customers more of an idea of what what to write, and it'll, it'll give you more valuable feedback that you can use to improve your business. And with that, I will turn it over to Matt. Yeah, great. So um, John just went through a lot of factors that, uh, that contribute to your online reputation, 
um, it just seems like there's there's a lot of little steps to go through. And so why why do we do it all? Why do these online reviews matter? Um, really, the the answer is your online reputation drives revenue for your business. So there's a definite threshold that consumers view as a yay or a nay to a business, and that's 3.3. So if you've got a if you've got a ranking or a rating lower than 3.3, you're definitely going to want to do everything you can to to boost that threshold. Obviously, you want to be closer to five than 3.3, but uh, um, make sure you're well above that. Additionally, 82% of consumers say the content of a review um, tips them over the edge between making a decision and, and not. 83% of consumers say online reviews had an impact on, on their purchase decisions as well. So there's three factors that, uh, that impact the entire customer journey. So first, awareness. 61% of buyers use online reviews to learn about new products. Essentially, um, online research is increasing at a, sig a significant rate. The question is, can they find you? Next, consideration. 84% of consumers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. It wasn't that long ago that you'd depend on your friends and your family to tell you which businesses, which businesses to frequent, where to go. Um, now, we find that People trust the word of a complete stranger online just as much as they do a, a close friend or, or a family member, um, which really is, is a great asset for uh, for you as a business. You you now have an entire army of people who uh, who can be your your spokespeople. And three, the decision. Ninety percent of consumers say buying decisions are influenced by an online review. <clears throat> Essentially, this is a way you can build trust and reflect the experience that your your customers are having. Here's a couple tips to help your business improve its, its online presence with reviews. We talked about the fact that uh, essentially this drives revenue. So um, now the question is, how do we get them? So um, the timing of the invitation is, is hugely important. Just a week ago, I had some work done on my car. Uh, I had a great experience. The, the shop treated me very well. Um, when I was leaving the shop, they said, hey, uh, just take a minute to leave us a review, please. And I had every intention of, of leaving a review, but the email that they sent me three days later was too late. That kind of, that motivation that I had was gone. I'd, I'd almost completely forgotten about that experience. So really, we want to strike when the iron is hot. So you want to get that invitation to the customer, um, if possible, before the customer even leaves the business. That will uh, drastically increase their likelihood of leaving a review. As you, as you invite people, just set expectations for, for that review. John talked about a couple things that, that matter, such as leaving a couple word description um, as well as the stars. Um, but go through when they'll receive the text, uh, how they'll receive it, whether they should keep an eye on their, their inbox or their, their messages, whether it's text or an email, and then um, how it helps you as a as a as a business if they respond. Yes, yeah, so um, this is really important because a lot of times uh, we found that businesses will just send a review invite without asking the customer, and if the, if they don't recognize your email or if they don't recognize the number where the text is coming from, if you haven't set that expectation <laughs> and let them know like. You know, you're going to be receiving this text message, and um, this is how how the process is going to go. If you could just take some time to leave us a review, that would be great. If you don't do that, a lot of times your conversions are going to be really low because the customer will look at it and be like, well, what is this, and just move on. Um, but if you prepared them and also done it at the right time, like I had mentioned in the previous step, um, then you're, you'll see your conversions and your number of reviews increased significantly. So let's let's talk about eliminating barriers. I've got a quick story about this. Um, my wife just had a baby four weeks ago. Uh, I have been eating casseroles and ice cream nonstop for 30 days. I decided it's time to, to get back into shape a little bit. So I had a goal Monday morning of, of working out, um, but my alarm came and went and I slept through it. 
uh, Tuesday, I decided that I would prepare everything so that once I woke up, all I had to do was um, in the in one corner I had my my socks, my shoes, my shorts, my shirt, everything ready. I even had a bag packed, water bottle set there, a protein shaker by the door. So I essentially, from when I woke up to when I was at the gym, was was very very fast. Um, and again, because I had done that, it was much easier. Again, I made it two days in a row this morning. So for your customers, you want to make it just as simple and easy as possible to leave a review. One of the ways to to think about this is um, send send them, you know, we found that text messages are, are ideal in this use. But additionally, uh, you don't want to send them to an obscure website that they may have to create a login and it may be a six or seven step process to leave a review. Uh, it's really easy. Most users or most customers have Google, they have Facebook. It's easy to, to generate reviews on those sites. Just make it as frictionless as possible to leave that review. On that note, though, um, how do you know which review sites to target? Um, you don't want all your review site or all your reviews on a single site. Um, you do want a balanced presence across across many sites. Uh, a giant factor is going to be what review site is important to your group of customers in your geographic area. It, it could uh, vary drastically. So, um, so that's that's up to a little bit of research on your side. However. Remember all those things that John said about local search engine optimization. For that reason, Google has got to be one of your, your staples for, for reviews. And then Google, or uh, Facebook, sorry, Facebook is gaining more and more recognition as well. So um, we recommend those two as, as kind of your pillars. Um, additionally, you want to incorporate dealer rater, cars.com, and, and those that matter to your specific uh, customers. Now, I probably don't need to say this, but uh, but obviously you want to deliver a high quality customer experience. As an auto dealer, you're in what we call a highly competitive market or even a perfectly competitive market where your goods are comparable. A, um, an F-150 versus an F-150, they're, they're, um, they're the same car really whether you buy it from dealer A or, or dealer B. So what sets you apart is going to be your customer experience. Reviews will set the tempo from that very first impression. So it essentially allows your previous customers to share their experience with your with your potential customers. 66% of customers will switch companies if they do have a bad experience. So um, so that's that's key to focus on. I hinted at this earlier, but we're finding text messages to have incredible conversion rates. What's fascinating is 99% of texts are opened, 90% 90, 90 of texts are open within three minutes of receipt. So very, very valuable. Again, we, we showed this statistic earlier, but 72% of adults in the U.S. have a smartphone, which are with them constantly. Um, because of this, texts are getting even more popular than, than email. And step seven, <clears throat> It, uh, it can be complicated to manage your online reviews across multiple tools, and so it's helpful to have a central management solution where you can see your reviews across platforms, respond to uh, comments from a single dashboard. Uh, so that's where Podium comes in. Podium does have that tool where you can manage uh, a single location or 50 locations all from one spot, monitoring all of your reviews and locations as well as employees and and which reviews are being sent out. Um, and so, so Podium uh, is here to help if, if uh, you're looking for a solution like that. Finally, we, we do have a promo code. So um, if you are interested in, in uh, pursuing Podium a little further, using the promo code Podium17 will get you 10% off your, your service agreement. And with that, we, uh, we've got a couple sources here, but we'd like to open it up for any question and answers. Perfect. That was a great presentation, guys. Um, now, our, our first question here um, says, regarding Google, my business page, is this for my business or Google Plus? Um, well, there's two different pages. So you, you, ha you can have a Google Plus page, um, which is it, it's different than your Google My Business. So um, you, you'll need to create um, 
I would recommend uh, rec uh, creating both a Google Plus and a Google My Business um, listing because now, um, for whatever reason, Google has uh, updated it and you can no longer add a description to your Google My Business page, but you can to your Google Plus page and that you know can factor into to what is displayed um, on your listing. But yes, I would I would make sure that you um, create both. Um, and you'll be able to see when you're logged into Google if you have, uh, you know, a Google My Business page as well. So, but it's easy right. to just quick, 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 quickly go to business.google.com, um, find your business, and see if you have the access to manage it already. Okay. Um, how do we know which review sites are important in our market, and then how do we direct customers to these sites? Okay, yeah, so I think that what you're going to want to do is um, when I recently bought a car, they asked me, you know, how did you come across this? And you might want to ask people if they if they found your business using review sites. You, you want to know how customers are coming to and finding and researching your business. So the easiest way to do that is to just ask them. Um, and after a while, you'll have a pretty good idea where customers are coming from. Um, and and once you know that, you should go and identify those listings, claim them, and optimize them. What was the second half of the question? Oh, it was it was how do we know which review sites are important in our market, and then how do we direct our customers to them? I'm guessing that means to leave reviews. Yeah, so the, the, the directing them, it goes back to like using an online review management tool like the one offered by Podium. Um, so the way that our solution works is that you're able to, um, you know, send them a text message with a link that takes them directly to the review site. There's not a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, just a couple of taps on their smartphone. It'll take them directly to the stars pages on those review sites and make it as easy as possible. So that's how we would recommend doing it, you know, because we want you guys to use Podium. But just have, have a tool in place that makes it, easy to send the invite. That's how we direct them and, and follow the steps that Matt had mentioned by, you know, finding the right time to send the invite and setting the expectation. That's how I would recommend going about increasing your reviews on those sites. Okay. Um, our next question is, uh, do you see a difference in length between mobile reviews versus desktop reviews? I feel like the response rate might be better on mobile, but the depth of the review would be or would suffer. Uh, yeah, right now I don't like I don't know if we have the ability to track that. I, I, that makes sense, um, but I think if you go back to what I was saying about directing, asking for specific feedback, that will help to to increase the length. But I think you're probably right on a mobile device. It's probably going to be a little bit shorter. Um, but it just so it just depends on what's most important to you at that time, whether you want to increase. Um, you know the number of reviews or the quality uh, of, of your reviews, but I think that the best way to do that is still by focusing on mobile because you'll be able to get more a, a higher volume of reviews coming in if you do that that way. Okay, um, and actually everybody that's on the line right now, um, we've got one more question. So if you have a question, please type it in now so we can make sure we get to you. Um, this next question, um, and normally we normally I wouldn't ask a question that's directed particularly towards a, 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 a individual product. So I'm going to add something. It says, does Podium, and then I'm going to add or a product like it offer any services that generate positive reviews? We are having a hard time getting employee participation unless they're incentivized to get them to ask their customers for reviews. Uh, so they're wanting to know how to get positive reviews. Um, yeah, how to get reviews. Well, Oh, well, I mean, I would definitely, like, a lot of our customers do incentivize their employees, you know, based on either the number of invites or the number of um, reviews they have that mention their name. I think that's definitely a good way to go. But I would, I would not focus on positive reviews. I would just focus on collecting reviews from the widest base of your customers as possible. If you're delivering good service, then a, a majority of your reviews are going to be positive. Um, and if you're not, if you're getting a lot of bad reviews, maybe it's time to um, look in turn, you know, inward and say, like, what can I do to improve my business so that um, I am getting positive, more positive reviews? 
Um, but I think the key is just you know collecting as many as possible um, because if you're delivering a good service, then you'll have a higher overall rating. At least that's what we found um, with our customers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no business is is perfect, so um, it's not a bad thing to to have a few uh, one and two star reviews. You just want to drown those out with as many four and five star reviews as possible. It would look strange if you had a hundred or two hundred five star reviews and, and nothing more. So anyway, I, I we get this question a lot. What do you do about a bad review? And um, I would respond to it and and uh, try to resolve it and make sure that everything's fine with that specific customer. Um, and then I would just focus on getting as as many quality reviews going forward as you can. Okay. Well, it looks like. It looks like that's our last question. Um, everybody, this is Brian Ankney with Auto Success. I hope that you enjoyed our, our webinar today. If, if you feel like this was some valuable information and that someone else in your dealership might benefit from, um, you're all going to get an email from me at the end of the, or thanking you for attending. And if you'd like, just respond to that, and I will forward your information on to um, John and Matt, and they can get you a, 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 a link so you can show this to somebody else in the dealership. Um, if, and again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. If, if, if you saw value in this webinar, and please join us again for a future webinar, uh, please reach out to me or anybody at Auto Success with ideas for topics and guests. Um, John and Matt, is there anything that you'd like to leave with our listeners today before we let them go? Uh, no, I just want to thank them for their attendance. And if you have any questions about Podium or how reviews can help your business, just reach out to Matt or myself. Our contact information is there on the screen. Well, great guys, thank you for thank you for uh, all this great information, this great presentation today. Um, actually, we just got a thanks thanks at in as a question. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for coming. I hope to have you on again in the future. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon. Goodbye.